That man smashing his um his sister's baby daddy's fiance's brother. Cause that's some real country shit. Anyway, um oh we can start whenever, right? <laughs> What's good out there, man? Welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. This your dude, Aldo Nice. Why you went with this your dude? I mean, I'm, I am their dude. You are their dude. You my dude, too. <laughs> and I guess I'm their dude also. I'm the dude, Rod Smooth. No, you can't be the dude, I want to be the dude, Like, too. only one of us is the dude. I want to be the dude, too. I like that. You never watch The Big Lebowski? Only one dude. You never watch Devin? You never listen to that Devin album? There's only dude. I want to be One Steve. dude. I want to be Steve. You know, remember that movie? Okay, I'm going to be Steve. <laughs> I want to be Steve. Anyway. <laughs> and there's also a song that says, I'm the dude. He's the dude. We's the dude. Oh, Something like that. There is. We're all dudes. So we could, I guess we, I guess we could all be dudes. <laughs> that isn't, that like, isn't that like Keenan and Cal though? Nah. It, it might be. <laughs> I think I'm a dude, good, you're a dude. <laughs> <laughs> so we all dudes today, man. Yeah, hey, thanks for um hopping in and being with us here for this um for this best friend weekend podcast. This is the tenth one. I mean, if you didn't listen to all ten, and you could um answer um the questions that we're gonna have in our quiz at the um end of this episode, we're giving away a free um something or another. Or maybe we lying, maybe we're not. But it's the 10th episode of the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. Listen, welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things. You know what I thought about this week, Raj? Right? That? that um people are, like, always doing something. Like, content for this type of thing. It's just, like, people say stuff and do stuff every week. Well, you know why? <laughs> why is that? Because the internet. Because the internet. That is a... That is a very poignant statement. Um, so I think we should go with that. But I mean, people have done a, it's, it's a, it's a heavy week. It's a heavy week in music. It's a happy week in hip hop culture. You know, just interesting things that we've been talking about this week that we wanted to um, share with you guys. So we're going to get into the big elephant in the room, which is, um, Hove. So if you're in here to check out our couple of takes on, um, on the God MC J Hova, um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about, about that at the end of the pod. We're going to start off with with one of our favorite rappers. I don't know. Um, this was <laughs> this was one of Roger's favorite rappers from Roger? the freshman clip. I thought you. My name's Raj Smooth. Oh, I said Raj. I didn't even say Er at the end. But one of your favorite rappers from the XXL class of 2016 making a Making a um a, a swift appearance is our guy Kodak Black. I like Kodak. I told you that I like Kodak. I like his songs, man. That little big pop album was pretty cool. I liked it. It was a thing. But um, Kodak had some interesting things to say about a week or two ago, and um, we're gonna play these statements for you now. And everybody's buzzing about it on Twitter, so I gotta ask whatever it's like. You like black? You like? You said you like black girls, but you said it's just like. I answered this question. I answered this question earlier. You know. Yeah. I don't feel like I have a need to simplify it again, but I'm gonna simplify it again. Okay, you know, I carry myself like I'm an average dude, cause I don't see myself no better than him, no better than him, you know, or no less than him. So if he could say that he likes skinny women. If he prefers skinny women more than a more chubby, heavy set women, he could say that and nobody won't get mad at him. I just said I don't like women with my complexion. I like light skinned women. I want you to be lighter than me. I love African American women, but I just don't like my skin complexion. Okay, okay. Well, I like we your skin gutter. complexion. We you, too you, gutter. You, you, black, black people, my, my complexion, we too gutter. Light skinned women, they more sensitive, you know? There's some dark skinned women out here sensitive. No, 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 they too tough. They too <laughs> tough. They too tough light skinned women, we could break them down more easy, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, it. Me, shout out to Cheney TV. Already know Florida, we in the building. Ty, sniper game. Wow, Kodak. Wow. You breaking down them light skinned women, huh? Ooh. Breaking them down, <laughs> breaking them down, Kodak. I, I mean, I. You know what? 
you 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 said something earlier when you heard this uh these comments earlier. You 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 quoted because this rapper is the most relevant rapper. He always is going to be quoted. You quoted Weezy F. What did Wayne say? Beautiful black woman. I, I always thought he said beautiful black bitch, but he didn't. He said beautiful black <laughs> woman. I bet that he might have said that that bitch look better red. He did say. That. I think that's what he said. Beautiful black yeah. woman. I bet that bitch look better red. Damn, Wayne. I mean, I guess if you, you're going after the Lil Wayne model and every little young rapper um, who's out here wants to be the next Lil Wayne, I guess, I guess then that's, 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 that's a Lil Wayne-esque statement to say, to say that um, you want you a light-skinned woman because dark skin, he, he said they was too gutter. They was gutter like him. Boy, Kodak, it's a little extreme. I don't know. I don't know if you can typecast all of the um, the light skinned women one way and all of the dark skin. As a matter of fact, I know you can't, because I'm pretty sure there's some real gutter. Did you crazy did you just try to chicks. did you just try to say if all like try to compare all dark skinned women to to all dark skinned women and all light skinned women to all light skinned women? I mean, that's what Kodak said. Well, that's what Kodak said. Yeah, well, Co- okay, so we both know that Kodak has a touch of retardation in him too. <laughs> <laughs> we do, but he's not necessarily sent. Let me give you something. This podcast, the first podcast was brought to you by um, Lawrence Williams answering service. This podcast is also brought to you by Lawrence Rumble Williams. And uh, one day, little Cuzzo told me this. He was like, uh, he just he said this with the most serious face on earth. He said, man, our daddy's nice here. And I was like, why? He said, look at him, man. They all got him a big yellow. A big fine yeller that they married. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, I'm not about to talk down on my mama or my aunt or nothing. Also, but I'm also in the same like boat as y'all with my parents, but I'm also not about to call my mama a big fine yeller. So <laughs> that, man, that man called his mama and his aunt some big fine yellers. It obviously he I mean, did. I don't want to necessarily call my aunt a big fine yeller, but like I could see if I'm trying to make a point, I would, you know, maybe make that point to you, but I would never refer to my mom as a big fine yeller. <laughs> and, and funny enough, funny enough, that's funny. My brother actually one time told my dad, um, when he was comparing me to, to the, you know, to the same in the same light. But he said, if this was, if it was this day and age, dad, you would have probably married a white woman. And my daddy was like, what are you talking about? Hmm. And he was like, well, it's not this, it wasn't this day and age. And you got the closest thing that you could. <laughs> And I said, nah, yeah, there might be some some truth to that, but like, you know, I'd like to I'd like to think that uh that's not true, you know. Um, <laughs> let's 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 be let's let's be you know let's be kind of frank about it, man. Um, what do you think? You see a beautiful black woman. I mean, you know, beautiful dark skinned chocolate black woman. I'm not necessarily gonna think. Oh man, look at that beautiful black woman. You know what? She would look better yellow bone. Or she would look better red. Okay. But hold up. I'm not finished. Go ahead. Go ahead. But Go ahead. would she look better red? <laughs> 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 what if he saw one that actually would have looked better red? <laughs> <laughs> so a- I don't wanna I don't wanna say that Lil Wayne might have been wrong. Maybe he was talking about a specific individual. Is that what you're getting at? I don't think he was just well Lil Wayne is prone to just saying anything but I think in that case he saw a beautiful black woman and he said damn I bet that she would look that better look, red that bitch would look better she red she would look way better if she was red oh shit I mean possibly possibly but okay so full disclosure you guys know where we are from a lot of people who follow the pod we talk a little bit about our Louisiana roots specifically southwest Louisiana and Kadiana roots in the southwest Louisiana. <laughs> Whoever made this podcast brought to you by Exposure. <laughs> Ooh, that boy went hard. But um, we all kind of grew up with that same... I don't know if we all grew up with the same mentality. But there was definitely a... There was definitely something that we all kind of knew that it was like, oh, yellows is like kind of... I mean, Red Chicks was like... what was It was, was hot in the streets. Um... Uh, you know, like I know, like everybody else know, when we was at Senior High or Westgate or um, Anderson or Bell Place, high school. we was looking for 
We was looking for them chicks from Grand Mary. We was looking for and and if you guys don't know what Grand Mary is out there, um, I just I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it in ten seconds. Uh, once one time the homie was in um, in Atlanta and he ran into a guy and he told him he was from New Iberia and the guy said, "Oh man, I heard they got like this place out there." Like in Louisiana, it's got to be close to that where it's like nothing but yellow bones, like as far as the eye can see. And like dark skinned niggas just go over there and they just dominate. They can get whatever they looking for. So ever since then, me and uh, me and Jay call it the land of the myth- mythical creatures because the like, land of out there, <laughs> like it must be it. But I mean, that's how we kind of grew up. Like all oh, them yellows is in Grand Mary, not knowing kind of like their, um, eth- their ethnic upbringing <laughs> and their genealogy and how... How they would turn out in the long run. Well, no, but back at when we was kids. So, all right. So we talked about <laughs> we talked about people having their own race, and you know what? That's that might segue well, but people have their own race. So, like Michael Jordan is definitely his own race. Um, <laughs> you know, like Michael Jordan wouldn't be able to take the uh, ACT because there's no. It's like black, Indian, Hispanic, white, non-Caucasian, and then it would have to say Michael Jordan. He would have to circle others. <laughs> Uh, in Grand Mary, they kind of consider themselves to be their own race. They consider themselves to be their they own race. They consider themselves yeah. to be their own race, and um, and honestly, I mean, with their um, with their with their cultures and the way that they, you know, I guess let me say not cultures, but their standards back in the day, at least. I mean, they might be their own race. You know, you got a, a big section of a city, just a, a, a village inside of a city. Where you, you have to be one color. Like if you're, <laughs> you, if you if you're too light, eh. If you if you're too dark, eh. Like you gotta be beige. I don't I don't think so because I remember a lot of little cats from Grand Mary when I was growing up was all was 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 there was no too light. There was some very 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 fair skinned little brothers from over there who was on that Grand Mary wave. But you de- you definitely could be too dark. Oh That's no! Definitely a thing. Wait, absolutely, you could be too dark. I mean, I know you. I know your parents. It's like you know. I know your parents told you back in the day you had to, you know, they bring out like a out of a brown paper bag or something like that. And if you was darker than a brown paper bag, then you had to go home. <laughs> something like that. Something like might that. might have been a beige paper bag. I, I think paper bags are <laughs> more light skin. Yeah, it's a it's, yeah. A paper bag test was a real thing. Beautiful yeah. black paper bag. I bet that bitch looked better red. I mean, I guess if I had a paper bag and I could s- select a real light skin paper bag, I might get me a big red paper bag. But my my thing is, what we what we talking about, like, I mean, what we're talking about is something that's probably ingrained in a lot of people. I mean, like, I saw some posts recently when they when they were talking about Kodak, and they immediately went to like Willie Lynch, like in that kind of thinking. They were like, oh, like let's talk about. Um, Let's talk about black people kind of with this Willie Lynch syndrome and like how we were taught to kind of hate our own complexion and be like, I've heard a comedian also say that um, they've never heard an a, a Asian person say, damn, that Asian in a motherfucker. He yellow than a bitch. Like nobody says that like black people are the only people who kind of like get on each other or whatever about their skin complexion. I say all that to say that we grew up that way. But I completely don't feel that way um, anymore. If I see a beautiful dark skinned woman, I'm like, oh, I mean, that's that's I mean, honestly, maybe selfishly, I would say that I feel like I'm the right skin complexion. So anything kind of one shade below or above me is probably what's very sexy to me. But um, yeah, I mean, I didn't see pale chicks. That's like, uh, you need you need some sun. And I didn't see some really dark chicks that's like the most beautiful chicks in the world. So, like, I like I don't I don't feel that way anymore. But we definitely grew up with that. So I could see like a little young ignorant cat like Kodak riding with that. I just don't like how you. T- <laughs> I just think it's interesting that he would say that light skinned women easier to tame because I feel like that's kind of like the same theory we have about defensive players in the NFL who are light skinned, right? Like, if you play defense in the NFL and you're light-skinned, you're crazy. You're nuts. You're Tyron Matthew. You're Leron Landry. You lead with your helmet and you get... He went to LSU. Like, and you play safety. <laughs> <laughs> Odell Beckham. 
You, well, defensive players. Like, they're crazy. If you light skin and play defense, you're crazy. So, I feel like light skin chicks, yeah, they're crazy too. So, I don't know what Kodak talking about with like these light skin chicks is easy to tame. I know a bunch of nuts, so light skin chicks. So, typecasting everybody is just kind of, um, just kind of crazy. But, Roger, I remember you saying something recently about Grand Mary too. Um, like I told you something about, oh, it was a dude. I'm not, I'm not even going to say dude name, but he was talking about some chicks. I, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. We were at like a class reunion and he said something to the extent of, um, oh man, that thing was fine. Man, that thing was like a, a grand Mary chick or whatever. And you, you responded and said, man, grand Mary is so played out. <laughs> well, out of style. You know, Hey, shout out. Look, I definitely want grand Mary to listen to the podcast, but I think grand Mary has had his heyday. You know what I mean? And it might, you know what, you know what, Al? I just think that the the thirty year olds, the thirty year old grand married, like they they that's the ones that had their heyday. They might have some, you know, they might have some really pretty, you know, eighteen to twenty four year olds at, at in grand Mary. but the twenty five to thirty year old ones, for lack of a better word. <laughs> They done? They done, bro. I said I can't I can't be too mean, but they done. They I'm not with them no more. It's not it's not a prize <laughs> possession. It's not a prize anymore to me. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. I don't. Yeah, there's there's nothing really none of them that was really bad in school that I could look at and say, "Oh, that thing. Oh, that thing's still bad." I mean, I just don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they Let work me tell somewhere. You this is how I feel about lights. That I just don't know. About lights. They have maybe a nurse practitioner? No, that's about not it. Light, like LPN. Let me tell you how I feel uh, about LPN. light light skinnedness. I feel like you got to be careful <laughs> with your light skinnedness. That's how I really feel. I feel like if you're light skin and you got a bad attitude, then I really don't like you. I, hmm. for, for for whatever reason, you know? You're talking about chicks. I'm talking about anybody. I'm talking Light about people even, in general. even dudes. If you just walk up okay. and your chest always popped up, and you just think you're all that because you're light-skinned, I got a problem with you. <laughs> like, I'm. it's not because you're light-skinned. It's because you're light-skinned and you think you're all that. You know? And that just goes back <laughs> to that shade theory, you know? Um... Yeah. And you know what's interesting, even more interesting about that? I don't know how it is in Colorado, but when I moved to Houston, I remember one time specifically, I was we were sitting up playing dominoes with a whole bunch of old cats from in Houston. And uh, one of these dudes said, um, he was like, something, something, something. And this light-skinned nigga always doing something. And I'm looking around like, who is he talking to? And dude is looking dead at me like, light-skinned cat. And I'm like, whoa, what do you, what do you mean? I mean, where we from, obviously, there's a clear delineation. I'm a dark-skinned brother, man. Um... Uh, out here, they don't. They kind of monochromatic, man. They all pretty dark out here in um in Houston. Shout out to this podcast is brought to you by all Houston cats who are all the same skin complexion. Um, we got a little variation from Louisiana, a little a little Creole, a little gumbo. And you know what? That's they a good. Say, that's a good point that you made. I think the variation in color gives us that. Gives us that. Um, you know, like I guess that that open that open road to clown. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, because white people, yeah, you could be pale, but, like, you only go so dark. Like, if you're white, you either go red, like, you either go really pale to red or really pale to, like, you know, I don't even know the color. It would be, like, a little, like, just tan, you know, like a tanned white person. But if yeah. you're black, you could go from super light skin, I mean, almost white, you know, Jones uh, <laughs> white, a Jones black. <laughs> And you, or you could go to, um, you know, Damiette Charles Black. You know what I'm saying? Shout out! <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Damiette Charles. Um, you could go that dark, you know, African dark. You know what I'm saying? So there's such a spectrum yeah. when it comes to, when it comes to black people that it's like. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it's undesirable to be that dark? Um, I saw like this, I've been seeing like this, um, this, these posts about this one girl who's like supposedly, I don't know, it, it, it almost looks like Photoshop how dark she is, but she's a really attractive girl. So, I mean, I think, oh, this is going to sound bad, but hey, it is what it is. I think that guys can get away with a lot more than females. Like, I think that guys could be really dark to really light skin and pull it off and somebody would be like, oh, that guy is hot or, you know what I mean? And 
guys could also be really ugly and dress really nice and do other stuff and people like they'll pull it off. I feel like with women, it's a little tougher. Like people are going to be a little bit more critical and judge and guys kind of do have that, that, um, just maybe that predisposition to feel a certain way about extremes. Because I remember, and we're talking, we're using an example. I remember this girl in high school really being like on me, like wanting to, to be down. Little, um, little very, very fair skinned chick from back home. And I was like, no, this, she's too light. She like pale. Like, I don't like it. Like, uh. And, uh, I mean, she was a cute girl. And I mean, but just at the time, I was like way too pale. So you can, if you could be too pale, then I guess you could be too dark too, as I guess is what I'm getting at for someone's taste. So if it's all going back to taste, was Kodak Black really all that wrong for saying, I just like yellow chicks? No, he wasn't wrong at all. I never, I never said he was wrong. And you, I don't think you even, I don't think you ever said that either. I just think, I just think where he went wrong was in the second part of his, um, <laughs> you know, in the second part of his comments where he was saying about how dark skinned chicks are gutter. This, this podcast, <laughs> you know what? And she probably don't even listen to this, but this podcast is brought to you by Arnea Wallace. <laughs> That's the whitest black girl I know in my life. You've heard white people. You've heard white people say that before, right? Yeah. You're the whitest black person I know. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, Arnea <laughs> Wallace, dark as I don't know what, dark as as a, a and she's a very dark girl. I don't need to make a metaphor here. She's a dark girl. She is. I guess she would be the epitome of what what Kodak is talking about as light skinned girls being sensitive. You know, yeah. like she's a sensitive girl. She's not gutter. She's not gonna slash your tires. I don't know what she'll do in, in her free time. But anyway, I know she's a nice girl. So I that's wonder if she'll I let you break her down real easy. She probably is very breakdownable. So <laughs> all I'm saying is, is not no. I think Kodak. I don't. I don't think Kodak was on to anything. I think he should have left it at the fact that his preference is lights, this fair skinned women. You know, that's it. And I would have been cool with it. But after that, after he kind of just put everybody in one demographic, one, one big lump. You know, and said, "Oh, dark skinned women's gutter like that." No, nah, that's not. That's not the truth. Yeah, I guess it's definitely not the truth. But I mean, you know, it, it's 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 his preference. But you know, like I said, it's it's kind of asinine to put it in that regard. But hey, Kodak, we don't expect a bunch out of Kodak. But you know, Kodak Black. Speaking of Kodak Black, um, and black things, let's let's you know, let's let's talk a little bit about black yes. black China. <laughs> black China. <laughs> speaking of black things. Speaking of black things, black Ch- speaking of people who love black things, um, and white things, black China. Um, so obviously over the weekend there was a lot of um back and forth between Black China and Rob Kardashian, and you know what's interesting about that? Neither one of us really cared. No, but not at all. <laughs> but everybody else seems to be talking about it. So, I mean. I wanted to read to see what the big deal was, and we could give our two cents from the peripheral. I mean, is that cool, Raj? Can we just talk a little bit about it and say kind of what we feel in a swooping manner? Of course we can. Um, I don't know much about Black China strips. Probably hang with Anger Amber Rose, one of the IG um, thotties that I don't follow, so I don't really know anything about Black China. Rob Kardashian, I've never watched the Kardashians. I watched um Ray J and Kim a few times. Um This podcast is brought to you by um William Raymond Norwood Jr., the originator, the boss. Um but yeah, I don't I don't know much about it, but once we started doing our research, it's kinda interesting. Right? So how does this work, Raj? Was it um so what came first? Did the tiger with the chick come first? Tiger, did, is that how it worked? Tiger met Black China. They had a kid. Black China. She was a video vixen. She was in a bunch of videos. You know, she's plasticked up, you know, full of plastic, just a a real a, a, an attractive it's kinda hard not to be attractive when you're full of plastic. You know what I'm saying? Um but yeah, she's you no, know, she's a video vixen. She's basically these Instagram models that nothing but trouble, you know. Um, 
And she met Tiger. She ended up having a baby for Tiger. Have a baby by me, baby. Be a millionaire. So, you know, and then she just, you know, she blew up and, you know, she had, had a couple of celebrity relationships and then she ended up with a Kardashian. Oh, my God. You know, like, you got the boy Kardashian, you know? <laughs> it's only one boy Kardashian, right? You got the boy who... You know, I mean, it's just almost just following. That's kind of that's kind of like a gold digger's dream, though, right? I mean, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Uh, to be honest with you, man, you know, we've talked about this. I think when we were when we were kind of getting everything together, it's really, really hard to care about these E list celebrities. You know, I mean, mm. I, I'm giving them E, but they're probably close to like X, Y list celebrities. You know, I mean, they still matter. They're celebrities, but. Why are the celebrities is what I'm getting at. Oh boy, got to be smarter than this, man. I don't give a shit what kind of celebrities they are. This could have been some people in your neighborhood. And I get your, I get your angle, but you, like in our position, you can't really take the angle of news isn't news. I mean, news is news and, and there's got to be a take on everything. And I would just basically say this, that, um, my take in a nutshell is that dude got to be smarter than that, right? Like, you, well, it think, takes a yeah. special type of human being to to be an Instagram, like like you said, an Instagram model, like Lil Wayne said. Like, just to be naked, like, or half naked on IG all the time and to be stripping for a living. It takes a different type of money-hungry type individual to do that as, like, their job, I think. Maybe I'm being very disrespectful to all IG models who like, I'm just IG modeling to put myself through grad school. I don't know. Maybe I'm hating. I don't think I'm hating. I just think it takes a special kind of little gold digging person and you should be wary of that. Especially, I, I wouldn't say that his sisters are like super gold diggers. They, they mess with like rappers and basketball players and Tristan Thompson's and James Harden's and Kanye's and Reggie Bush's. I mean, it's pretty much the gambit of, of black men. Um, and Tiger. <laughs> and, but I don't think they, I, it doesn't come across as gold digging ish to me because it feels like they kind of have their own wave. They're definitely feel, I feel like they're using people. Like, they're like, oh, I, I want to use these guys for, for the fame and the popularity that goes with it. But I don't know if they're gold digging. Maybe maybe that means I'm tripping. Maybe I'm not seeing the porcelain goddesses being gold diggers, but I'm clearly seeing the black woman being a gold digger. Maybe I'm wrong on this. What you think? I don't think it's gold digging because I think they all got their own, you know? every All, all of them girls got their own. Yeah, maybe maybe some some of the other guys or some of the people that they've dated have gotten them there, gotten them the popularity that they yeah. have gotten. But in their in all of their current statuses, they they've got their own. So I don't think I don't wouldn't call it gold digging. I think I think, and this is gonna be weird for me to say because I really don't care about those girls that much. But I think it's almost a power move to date a, a Kardashian. Like you instantly become more relevant than you were. If you date a Kardashian for no reason, just because just for the simple fact that they're a Kardashian. So maybe the men that decide to give these girls chances because that life is about choices. The men yeah. that decide to give these girls chances might this might be the gold diggers. At, at, at a certain point, I think you I think you're right. I think. I think Ray J wasn't gold digging. I think Ray J was just trying to um, I think dig Ray and J, kill guts. When it had Ray, when it was Ray J, <laughs> he just had an old lady like that was just his old. That's my old lady, Kim Kardashian. Y'all know her, you know. And then, honestly, um, I had a. I don't know how into the Kardashians you are or into Kim you are, like Kim's. I was. I, well, I, I can. I can answer that. I'm not as into Kim as Ray J was. Okay, <laughs> so Kim. I had a girl once explain Kim to me and she said that Kim is a straight hustler. She's a businesswoman. She's serious. She doesn't have a, a sense of humor. Like she's just about her stuff all day, every day. I have grown to like the Kim Kardashian, Kanye West union. I like that. I never disliked it. Well, Whenever it first happened, I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, Kanye can't find somebody else. Like, it can't be. I mean, yeah, Amber Rose is a train wreck to me. But 
I like her. But <laughs> Kim Kardashian at one point seemed like a train wreck too. But I have grown to like the union. I think that they're definitely a power couple. They're definitely. I think that I. I even think that they're along along the lines. Maybe not as as influential, but along the lines of Jay Z and Beyonce. You. It, it's hard pressed to like. Like, if you're going to go there and the beehive might come for us, it might be like nothing but bees on the bottom of our little post by the end of this. Come on, beehive. But the, um, I don't think you're off. I don't think you're off with that in the least bit. I honestly think that, um, Kanye's more, oh my God, that sounds, that's going to sound bad. Kanye's a better musician than Jay-Z. Hope the J-Hive don't come after you. And Kim Kardashian has, they, she, I mean, I don't know. We could she's probably light, check she's this. She's more light-skinned than Beyonce. Is that what you're trying to say? She damn sure more light-skinned than <laughs> <laughs> Kodak wow. Black can take her all day. But Kodak nice. I, I would be one, I would be very curious to see Instagram followers, Beyonce versus Kim Kardashian. Like, I feel like it's got to be one and one. I mean, it's, it's. It's probably not at a so. I feel like they I guess both the point have really, I'm, really strong followers. Like they both, they both, yeah, like you said, what and what, but they both have a loyal following. And that's kind of where I'm getting. That's that's where I was going with it. So it's like, oh my god, maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm looking at it right now. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe we're both wrong. Maybe we're both, well, no, no, no. it's, it's yeah, very similar. It's right, it's one one. Yeah, one hundred and four million to one hundred and one million. So it's one one. They both have very strong followings. Their husbands both make a lot. Of, I mean, I guess you would say that Jay Z probably has more money because of the business acumen and different things that he's doing with um with his late. I mean, you know, with just in the music industry. But um, yeah, they're along the same lines. I could go with that. But I know you didn't think Kanye was a gold digger. By hopping with Kim Coit? Um, not necessarily. But, but, I do think that Kanye had different options. And I think, monetarily, Kim Kardashian was his best option. Okay, yeah. And that's fine. But you know, when you, like, let's just... Let's flip it the other way. Beyonce married Jay Z. Oh, because she loved him and whatever else. Power move. Jay- Beyonce had a bunch of other options who looked way better than Jay Z. Probably were way more, um, like close to her age. Probably were nice, sensitive men who would have been good husbands, just like Jay Z. She picked a, a partner who would be a a business partner well, just as well. So you can't say that like Kanye did that. You, I mean, Beyonce did it too. If um, if if. If I'm Jay-Z and I'm in the club, I'm sorry. Let's say if I'm Beyonce and I don't necessarily, I don't think like a woman, so I don't know. But if, you know, I'm just thinking on logic. If I'm in the, if I'm in the club and Jay-Z is a cool ass person, I I am not going to lie. Just to go ahead and throw this out there. I am not a big fan of Jay-Z, the musician or the rapper, but I am a big fan of Jay-Z, the person. If J- if I'm in if I'm in the club and I'm Beyonce and I got all of these options, I got a hundred thousand options in the club. Yeah, I'm in a big a fillion f- options with an F. And Jay Z is there, and he is interested in a power move, but also a power move that involves love. I'm all ears. On the flip side, I'm in the same. I'm in. The, I'm. I'm. I'm feeling the same vibe coming from Jay Z. If I'm Jay Z and I have all these women, and of course I'm sure it's. E- I would. I would like to think that Jay Z would have would have an easier time going home with someone than Beyonce going home with someone random. Jay Z can go home with any of these random girls in the club, but Beyonce is in there, and she is interested in making a power move. But a power move that involves love. Let's have dinner. Let's just see. Let's not force it. But let's see. Yeah, and Jay-Z be my and choice. Beyonce make a power choosing. couple. I, I get it. Like, who I else get could it. Jay-Z so, have chosen? I don't know. Who could Black Rob... I mean, who could uh, Rob Kardashian have chosen? Anybody, because he's irrelevant. That's not... I mean... He could have chosen somebody he... from Grand Mary. <laughs> 
So, what's his angle then? Why is he? Why does he hop with the Black China though? Because she's fine. Is that what it is? Because because he's got something with him. Like you, we can't listen. I get your point about his irrelevance and how um, Rob Kardashian doesn't necessarily matter in the big picture. But you are the only guy in that whole Kardashian machine that is worth billions of dollars at this point. So you do know you got something with you that people are going to be like, like you're going to be desired by people trying to make a power move. How you let yourself get caught up in that situation? Then he went out so simply. Like, I don't even... Did you see he was like, oh, she fucked 20 dudes, like, this week? Like, I went over there and smashed, and then somebody else smashed the next day, and then another dude smashed the next day, and with my son, my daughter there, and all kind of other stuff. Who was the daughter sleeping? Like, I don't know. Maybe she was, uh, hopefully she a, wasn't a, playing a, at the very, foot like, of I the hope, bed. I hope that the listeners out there did not take that seriously. <laughs> she was, hopefully she wasn't playing at the foot of the bed, was, pulling at the sheets. On the iPad in the front. <laughs> that's logical though like those pictures look like they were taken during the day so who knows but I mean yeah you can't get yourself you can't let yourself get caught up in um, in that type of a trap but I mean I guess I guess the people can be very convincing and like I love you Rob it, all, all of the time having maybe an ulterior motive it is what it is I can't like I mean I, I can go back to what you said and not really hate because I'm like, um, who really, who wouldn't take that deal if I was her? If I could get down with that and like get some money. I mean, let's hope some prenups was involved. I don't know. Did they ever even get married? No, no this is just child that. support. This is child support we're talking about and stuff like that. It's practice. <laughs> you're talking about practice. Not a game. Not a game. Practice. I mean, man, listen, I, I get it. I wanted to talk about Rob Kardashian in Black China because it was an interesting story to me. I get it by your by your tone of voice, by the way you're continuously pivoting the conversation. I'm not going to fight it anymore. I'm going to let you get to Jay-Z because cause you just said you weren't a big fan of Jay-Z, but the last 10 minutes, all you want to talk about is Jay-Z. Nah. So let's talk about Jay-Z. That's what you were doing. Nah, I'm just, it's just real. So let's talk about Jay-Z. Sure you the excitement you, in my voice. You just said Jay-Z album uh, is... You don't. You're not a big Jay Z fan and everything of this sort. But Jay Z's album came out this week and it stopped the internet. I mean, what are your thoughts? My thoughts on Jay Z's album stopping the internet. It did. Uh, I think anyone with the with the um, with the celebrity status of Jay Z would stop the internet if they dropped an album. If Kim Kardashian dropped an album, <laughs> let's go back to that. Um, <laughs> it would stop the internet and it would go, it would go certified double platinum or however, or whatever platinum. Yeah. But start, but, start. That's interesting though. I'm going to come back to that. Okay. So crazy enough, crazy enough. I do respect Jay Z's career. I'm not a fan of East coast rappers. There's not a lot of East coast rappers that just grab my attention. And after listening to most of this album, it's to me, if I had to deem it something, it would be deemed unlistenable to. Like, I don't, I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I, but what I do respect about it, though, what I do respect about the Jay-Z album is that I can tell that he has grown up and matured into a very nice gentleman old man. It seems like gentleman old man rap to me. And I don't want to listen to that. When I want to listen to rap, <laughs> when I want to listen to rap, I want to party, I want to dance, I want to, I want to hear rhymes like really cr crazy rhymes. I, w I also I want some reality in it too. You know, I want some some real cool stuff. I don't mind hearing you shot somebody and you you fuck somebody's wife and all of that. You know, like whatever. That's I don't do that kind of stuff in my free time, but I don't mind hearing about you doing it. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to hear about. But I, like I said, to go back, I respect the fact I feel like Jay-Z really, really was trying to get people to understand that he is a grown-up now. And he has kids and responsibilities. And that's what okay. he seemed like he rapped about to me. And that's not what I listen to rap for. <laughs> I'll go back to the first thing you said about um, two times platinum or whatever. I think I saw it like 10 times platinum. Some crazy foolishness. No, it didn't like go 10 times platinum. 
I heard some crazy Stop stuff it. like that. Right, no, 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 no. All right, it might have went platinum in like 10 days. I, I, it, didn't even, it hasn't even been out 10 days. It was some craziness like that. My point is, whatever those numbers tell you, I don't believe in any of those numbers anymore. When we were kids and we're talking about shipping CDs to um, Best Buy and to Sam Goody and to Music Vision <laughs> and people going into Hanks and people going buy albums from Peaches, you can say you sold a million copies because they pressed a million copies. A million copies got sent to stores. You went platinum. Now in the age of digital streams and everything else, come on, man. You can't tell me Jay-Z went platinum because people are on title listening to the album. Well, so you, then, no, I mean, so that not, means everybody you listen to, they kind of can go on that route towards, um, towards platinum. And with him having his own medium like title, I feel like that skews the numbers because they can, I, I don't know. I just don't trust it anymore. I know there's like a certification agency that certifies platinum. I just don't believe it. Just not. Uh, I mean, I know that's not and, a, the, the bigger I get, yeah, point. No, that, no, that's not. And I understand what you're saying. Like that's, that's actually a really, a really good, a really good theory. You know, I'm full of theories, but yeah. Yeah, that's a really good theory. I just think that there's certain people in this world that if they drop anything, it's going to go platinum. There's certain people that maybe won't go platinum. But Jay-Z is one of those people. Jay-Z is one of okay. those guys. It's like easy for Jay-Z to go platinum. If he I drops agree. Anything. He can drop an audio book and it's going to go platinum. Okay, I agree about that. But my point that I'm trying to make is just this. Back in the day, if, if, if I wanted Jay-Z's album to go platinum, I'm going to go buy Jay-Z's album. And if I listen to it once or twice in the car and never listen to it again, so what? He sold an album that's working one out of a million towards him being platinum. But now, if I listen to it, stream it one time on net, on um, Tidal, then what is that? Does that count as him selling an album? Like... You know, you get my point. Like yeah, definitely... that's like listening to me in like listen. If I listen to his album in somebody else's car when I was growing up, does that count as an album sale? Like now, I don't know. Let me ask you a question: How many albums do you have to sell to go platinum? I think a million. So a million albums. So I think that because Jay Z and I would have to do some more research on it, but I'm pretty sure that Jay Z has over a million. Let's say he has enough followers to where enough loyal followers to where. There would be a million Jay Z fans that got title just because yeah. Jay Z owns title. What I don't like about title, and that's the big reason. Let me shout. Let me give a shout out. This podcast is brought to you by Snoop D O Double G. Cause I really feel like Snoop D O Double G is a real human being. I really feel like I could hang with Snoop. I wouldn't smoke with him, but I feel like I could hang with him. Like I feel like he'd be just a regular person. And I read an article, real life. Not even an article. Watch a YouTube video where Snoop admitted that he watched. I'm sorry, listened to Ty, to um to the Jay Z album four 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 bootlegged because he doesn't subscribe to Title. And so it almost when I think about Title, I think to myself, who does Jay Z think he is? You think that you can start a business, a music streaming business? And the basis of your business is people are going to get it because if they don't get it, they can't hear my music. Um, okay, that's, a, that's an interesting take. Um, this podcast is definitely brought, brought to you by everyone who allows someone to get their title password, their Netflix password, their Hulu password, their Spotify password. You... Are the real MVP. Just want to let you know that. The person that um, pays. Somebody's got to pay. We don't all have to pay. But somebody's got to pay. Um, I think just as many people got title. Because Beyonce's husband put out title. And there are probably Beyonce exclusives on title. No, there are. Which, which so... So for so let's not say that Jay Z is bold in thinking, hey, they want to listen to my music okay, and that's well, why I can make a company. Can, okay, me but if you remember the title rollout, the title rollout had Jay Z, Beyonce, it had like um, Das Punk, it had like um, a, it had a, a a lot of people, J Cole. It, it was like 
maybe 15 people got on the stage and it was different artists and they were speaking about artist freedom because the Spotify's of the world, um, correct me if I'm wrong. It was kind of like the same people. Isn't it like, um, the guy who made Napster, isn't it, doesn't he have something to do with Spotify? Um, it, those are just internet people who are, who are making money off of the streaming industry. Jay-Z's whole point is why can't the artist? And he's since turned that talk into why not the black businessman? Because if you listen to, um, to the 444 album, he does make it a point to say what I look like, um, drinking Belvedere when Puff got Syrah. Like, it's the whole point of like, what's better? He, he said, what's better than one millionaire too? Or uh, one billionaire too? Um, so he's really trying to push this angle of black owned business where I, so I disagree with you on like the whole, who does Jay-Z think he is? Fuck it. He thinks he's somebody trying to make a, a power play and trying to make some money. But I definitely feel that when somebody has a billion dollars with an F and then they try to lean on the whole kind of black business. I mean, I grew up, we talked about this before. I grew up on like Kwanzaa was a thing in my house. Um, Ujama, I think. Like, cooperative economics black people working together and like just keeping the money in the community and financial freedom by by supporting black business you can't be the billionaire and talk about support black business because at some point it's i mean yeah it's black business but it's at some point it's a multinational at some point it's just this huge conglomerate where we're, we're not helping the little man i'm not going to Edo car wash this podcast is once again brought to you by Edo hand car wash we might not. No matter how not many be clean. albums Jay Z signs, <laughs> Jay Z sells. No matter what you do in your life, <laughs> no matter if you do you, I'ma eat dough. I'ma eat dough, eat dough. But my point is just he—that's not no little small black business. And I kind of feel like telling Jay Z if I like, who do you think I am? Like. Okay, so if you're giving me the options that because you do agree that streaming music is the way that it has to be, of course, right? of course, you have to pay so, for streaming, <laughs> right? So some people pay for Pandora, some people pay for Spotify, some people pay for Tidal. I'm okay with paying for Tidal because it's the black guy that we know. Because the I internet. am, so I'm not okay for no, paying a title. No, I'm, let me tell you why I'm not. Not because okay of, of the internet, because well, the black guy me, we know. Let me tell you why I'm not okay. Because I don't like. Because and I'm not sure how it is now, but I know when title was first introduced, it was like ten dollars to listen to music. You know, you listen to all the free music you want to listen to, just yeah. like just like iTunes, just like Spotify. But if you want CD quality music, it's twenty dollars, and it goes back to our. A club promoter um, um, talk that we had on maybe episode one or two where I go to the white club and it's free to get in and the drink cups huge and you know it's 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 fun of course the black clubs are fun too but I gotta pay twenty dollars to get in and the cup is small so what's best for me because yeah what's best for Jay-Z What's best for his black business is for me to sign up for title at his twenty dollars. It definitely price. is. You know, you're right. You're but right. I, I'm sorry. I have to do what's best for me, and and it comes a point in time where I don't care what color you are that owns that business. If it if I can get if I can get a CD, let me put it to you like this: How I feel about black business and supporting it. If I can go to a white place or a black place, and the white place the CD costs ten dollars. In the black place, it costs ten dollars and one cents, and then I'll do. I can support. I can support black business. Okay. But if, if if it's if it's ten dollars at the white place, and then I gotta pay twenty dollars to get into the black place to play to pay ten dollars, then I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go ahead and get that from my white friend. Okay, I hear you. I hear you, and I think we're in agreement on the fact that. We are going to support black business when it's when it financially makes sense. My question would be, is Jay-Z's contribution back to the community with the money that we're spending on title and any and everything else that we've made Jay? Because we as the consumer have made Jay-Z a, a, a millionaire many a times over. A what? A billionaire ah. many a times over. Um, 
my question is, what does he give back? And is his giving back to the community, is that what? How does that look? Um, does that look like this album? Him telling us to pull up our... I mean, because I kind of feel like... And I'm going to get to my points of what I think about this album in a second. But I kind of feel like this is his Bill Cosby moment. His pull up your pants, um, young men, and mm-hmm. do like I do album. Mm-hmm. Is that his contribution? Like, is that... Like, that's him telling us how to, how to act and how to live. And that's Jay-Z's contribution. That's why we should pay him. Or does he do like a lot of philanthropic work where he's working with a whole bunch of underprivileged people and he's giving back to the community with this money that he's giving? Like, how is he doing cooperative economics to other black people? Is he, is he signing little young, little cats labels who's, um, young black guys who are trying to support their own black business? Is he giving back in that way? Like, I don't know. Maybe he is. Maybe Jay Z's fixing the water crisis in Africa and he's trying to make the world a better place. But my point is, once you get to a certain level of success, I don't feel like it's necessary for me to support your business. Like when he kind of, it, it's almost like he wants us to feel like he's Joe the plumber. He's like this small time business and you need to support black business. But you know, and what, I just in don't the grand feel scheme that scheme of things in the grand scheme of, of where Jay Z is at in the world of importance. He is Joe the plumber. He literally is Joe the plumber in his social status because so you think all, he's, we're all down Go here. Ahead. We're all down here where we're at. And Joe the Plumber, his name is Joe the Plumber. But in Jay-Z world, or let's just say in the business world, you know, Jay-Z owns a part of the Nets. Yeah. But if but the majority owner of the Nets, is that not that Russian billionaire guy? Poker, poker Ralph, poker Ralph or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay, so Jay-Z is Joe the Plumber compared to the guy... That really Fair enough. Fun. So, so okay, but Jay Z, you know how they say once you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, like after that, or one hundred fifty thousand, I think it is, that your level of happiness in life doesn't really go up anymore by any more money that you make. My point is, he's at a point in life where he makes enough money. Him and his family's combined income is enough where he can live very comfortably for the rest of his life. We don't have to continue to make Jay Z more rich. Like, and he shouldn't guilt trip us. Like, if we don't support him, we're not supporting black business with things like title. I think that's disingenuous. I think it's, it goes against what the real struggle is for real black, like small black owned businesses. And I guess small, small business is more of what I'm talking about. We should support black small business, not necessarily black big business as usual. He's not a business man. He's a business man. I mean, this is Jay Z's own lyrics. I mean, he's he's been saying this for years. Okay, but a little bit off the title. I just want—I know our time is getting a little short, so I want to just give you my four big takeaways from the album. Um, a lot of people were asking me. I made a little a little post earlier this week that lists my favorite albums for the year, and this one's like number seven, six or seven for me. Like it's it's not as good as Pretty Girls Love Trap Music. Um, uh, I'm I'm all about Two Chains. It's not as good as More Life in the least bit. Um. There's there's other albums that I, I mentioned there that were um that were definitely in my eyes better like hip hop rap albums this year. It was better than Kendrick Lamar's Damn, and that's about it. <laughs> no, it that's was about not. it for me. Yeah, it was better than Damn to me. No. But like that's about it. Um, you just don't like. But, you just don't like woke music. No, it's it's a lot of the same reasons. But let me give you my four my four big points takeaways. Number one, Jay Z could still make jammers like that that caught your eye song with Frank Ocean. That's it's jamming, and the four 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 song where he's talking about, you know, I guess him and Beyonce's um, turmoil and how he's becoming a better man. His flow was sick on that. I mean, he was killing it, and the beats were nice. I still feel like Jay Z can make music that's listen toable. So when you were kind of going on your little, your your, your not your little, I'm uh, sorry, but your <laughs> your your rant earlier about about him not making music that you that's pleasing to the ears he did have a couple of cuts on there specifically track four and five for me that i thought played very well and i and they had replay value i've kind of been listening to those two for the last couple of days so jay-z could still make jammers but um the second takeaway is that his life doesn't need to be our life like i, I saw some post online that was like jay-z when jay-z told y'all to change clothes y'all put y'all put up the t-shirts and everybody put on button downs and when Jay Z told y'all to um do this, y'all did that. And now Jay Z is telling y'all to um to grow up and act like some men and and love your family. I mean, I just think that I think that that's 
I think that that's fine of a thought, but I think 50 Cent said it best when he said that um, you can't be the best rapper at 47 because these new niggas is here and that shit is like golf course music. I really think 50 Cent wants to be Kanan in real life, but whatever. Um, it's, it's old people. Don't tell me I should act like a 47-year-old because I'm not. So I, I get the bigger point about Love my family. Of course I love my family and, and, and everything's of that nature. And, but Jay Z, nah, we don't have to do exactly what you say. Number three, you need to stay out of woman beef. Cause, um, there was, there was a line on the album that I just clearly, I just thought it was, I thought it was beneath Jay Z to say this. I just thought it was funny. He made a point to say, I have these two natural twins. And it was a weird line to me and I had to actually think about it. Because women online are like talking shit about Beyonce and saying that their babies were like fertility drugs for them to have twins. I had to look that up to figure out what it was. That's woman beef between women talking catty talk about other women. Like I got two homeboys who had, who were like beefing for like two years because one of them baby mama talked crap about the other one baby mama and it was some stuff with some money and it was between the two women and the two dudes ended up beefing for like a year. Jay-Z, stay out of woman beef. You're too old for that. You're 47 years old. Stay off, stay off the, you know, I mean, whatever. What was he in the freshman class in 1963? Double XL? I think so. That I think that was Jay-Z's one. And, and the last thing was just kind of dissing everybody on the album. I, it's rap. So rappers say diss things. They, they'll they throw out little barbs. But he dissed Eric Benet. Whatever. Eric Benet didn't do anything to you. Whatever. He's dissing La La Land as a movie with a whole song called Moonlight. Like, that's cool. That's not cool. Um, It's not cool just because it's not cool. Not because it's not a cool thing to do. It's just kind of lame. It's old. And the other two people that I want to talk about him dissing, his line about um, y'all look like fools with, with these racks up to your ears. Oh, holy money to you. Yeah, like, I mean, don't come for plies, please. Or the, or the rest of the rap generation who's doing that now, them cats is just having fun, putting money up to their ear, doing trendy little things. Like, you're hitting an, an, an Instagram, a social media challenge. Like, that's the same as like an ice bucket challenge or like running off on the plug. Putting racks up to your ear is plies way to stay relevant in the game by doing little funny things on social media that people think are fun. And Jay-Z wants to take that away and be like the mean old big brother uncle who says, get those racks from your ears because that's lame. And the other one, he said, in the future, niggas playing football with your son. We all know that if we come in for a hive, don't come for future hive. Future is my guy. Do not come for future, ho. So I don't know if you saw this, Raj, but um, future posted a picture of himself with racks up to his ear like we still give money. Like right after that came out, that was, that's a low. That's actually a low blow, but it's rap. You know, it's rap, and in rap, there's no, there's no, um, there's no fair fighting. You say what you want, but I tell you this about Jay Z, y'all best rapper that y'all ever had in the history of rap, God MC Jehovah. He was in one rap battle in his whole career, and he got annihilated. I just don't want y'all to forget that. Let's let's not forget the facts. And those and those facts speak loud. So that's what really all I gotta say about about Jay Z thing. I'm the album. Those were my takeaways. I just think that it's kind of like this interesting thing. I don't know who aggravates me more a little bit, Raj. I talk about this before. Like those people who say you're supposed to listen to J Cole and Kendrick Lamar because you're woke and you're not woke if you don't listen to them. But I feel like Jay Z has kind of got this other lane now. That's like you're not a grown up if you don't like this Jay Z album. And I think that's stupid as hell because. I agree with almost everything you said about music. I just want to hear some stuff that's going to be jamming, that the beats is hot, that we're going to like to listen to, that we're going to like to party to, to sit down in the car with. And that don't have to be grown-up music or woke music, and you don't have to make me feel bad about liking that. Drops my... <laughs> What you say I was a bit, you say I was on bad booze? What you mean I what you mean I love on bad booze? What's that? I wanna love on boo booze, but what you mean I bad on bad booze? <laughs> See, we're gonna have to wrap this in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I, I you can tell I got on a soapbox. Whatever. Let me get on my soapbox about hip hop. I feel I feel strongly about about 
about Hove in the in the in the state of hip hop. But man, more power to to Jay Z, man. I, I hope think, y'all buy that. Think, you know what I think? I think I've had fun with rap. Oh, uh, I was funny enough. I was talking to I was talking to a girl today, and she said. She mentioned to me, we were talking about our favorite DJs, and she said something like, I don't really vibe with this particular DJ. And I was like, well, why not? And she said, because I feel like every once in a while, he throws something in from like 2005. And I'm just like, that's why that's my dude. That's why I like him, because every once in a while, I want to hear... Big Pimpin spitting, you know what I'm saying? I want to hear yeah. Big Pimpin. I want to hear Nelly. I want to hear Ludacris. Like I want to hear these guys. In the midst of all of this, I don't really care if you cry, you know. <laughs> I want to hear that. And I've had fun with rap along the way, and I think as a whole, like as an artist, like as a whole, Jay Z was never one of my favorites. But whenever he put out a mainstream song. He was one of my favorites. Yeah. Like, Change clothes, you know, big pimping. Um, um, Jigga, that's my nigga. What's my motherfucking name? You know, like all that. Like all of his big songs are pretty much like even um that song Hello Brooklyn. Like that's probably my favorite Jay Z song with Lil Wayne. Love. I, I there's some Jay Z songs that I like. This album has no Jay Z like none of that on it. None all those punchlines though. It just doesn't, it doesn't have that Jay-Z song on it. Like that song where it's like, okay, this is why people, this is why mainstream, mainstreamers like Jay-Z. I think so the Jay-Z we... loyalists are always going to be Jay-Z loyalists, just like the J. Coles and the and the Kendrick Lamars of the world. And yeah, I thought you said something interesting earlier when you said about why you don't use like the type of rap you listen to has punchlines. What did, what did you, I don't remember exactly what you said. So, okay, so I've definitely grown, like, I think that my rap, my rap taste when I'm listening to, like, real rap, you know, like, not, not Kodak Black, not Uzi Vert, and no one in the, in the XXL 16 and, and, and beyond. When I'm listening to, like, real rap, you know, like, the, the guys that actually get on there and talk about the struggle and whatever, talk about what they've been through in life and, and can rhyme it and put it together and make a punchline. Not straight punchline rap, not Lil Wayne rap. Lil Wayne was fun at for me too at one point in time. But now I'm at the point where I want to hear a really, really, really fire poetry. Like I want to hear poetry. Hmm. And and my favorite growing up, you know how there's always there's different types of poetry. You know, like you always had the poetry, like the one that didn't rhyme. And I remember sitting in class and I'm like, that shit was weak. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like the one that didn't rhyme like why this shit don't rhyme and you're listening to like haikus and it's like oh no this shit got seven syllables and you're like okay I don't care you know like I want the one that rhyme you know and so like now when I listen to rap I want the sh- I want it to like I want it literally to like rhyme like I want and people I feel like are starting to rhyme sentences almost more so than they're rhyming just words Jay-Z in this album, and most of the songs that I listened to, I have to admit that I didn't listen to the whole album. A lot of it, he just, it was it was poetry, but it was the type of poetry that I don't like. <laughs> it was the type of poetry that I would listen to whenever we were in class. Hey, Rod, hey, Rod, read this, read this for us, for the class. And it doesn't rhyme, it would make me mad. I I, I think I can... I might not completely agree with that, but I definitely can understand where you're coming from. Like certain rappers, you hear stuff, you're like, "Ooh, you hear what that boy said?" Yeah. Like that—that that was ooh, that was live. Couldn't right. you hear how he rap? I didn't even expect that to come. This album felt like, yeah, he's kind of just talking, and yeah, he said some deep stuff. But I mean, I might have snickered once or twice in the album. I like to laugh when I listen to rap music. I do. I like to hear something and be like, that boy's stupid. You hear what he said? Like, I love that part of rap. Mm -hmm. So I can, I guess I can, I definitely can agree with that. That Jay-Z didn't give me a lot of that. And that might be, but you know what? I don't want to get off on a tangent because we really kind of, we really, really short on time. But um, Kendrick Lamar's album, I had kind of that same thing too. I didn't feel like a lot of humor or like that kind of like, oh, did you hear what that boy said? So let me tell you what I think is the difference between Kendrick Lamar's album. I think Jay-Z has kind of gone off on the deep end 
on um on those what what do they call it whenever you use someone else's music and you kind of like speed it up or slow Sample. it down samples the samples that Jay-Z use like they're just so Jay-Z like they're so east coast like they're just so centralized to that part of the country to me <laughs> that like boom not, boom pop yeah it's not it's not I mean, man, if I had to choose one form, like one region of music, I'm choosing the South. You know, it's nothing Southern about Jay Z's music. It just doesn't appeal to me. Um, Kendrick Lamar's music is East Coast. I mean, I'm sorry, West Coast music. I'm not really, re I'm not real down with that either. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of Kendrick Lamar. I think Kendrick Lamar is a fad. Um, but anyway, Kendrick Lamar, I feel like Kendrick Lamar is a fad. I don't feel like Kendrick Lamar is like the greatest rapper alive. Like most people think, <laughs> but it's, but I think that his music is more, is easier on the ears than Jay-Z's is, especially this past album or they're both of their past albums. Yeah. I mean, I think that, I think that they're both pretty, um, bottom of the barrel for me this year, but I mean, it's cool. It's, I mean, I can listen to it, but I just don't choose to listen to it. I mean, you know, whatever. I'd like to see if Jay-Z, cause I'm a, I'm an iTunes user. So I'd like to see if Jay-Z's album was on iTunes where it would rank after a week hmm. in, in comparison to damn, to Kendrick Lamar's album. Um, yeah, they, they got loyal followings. Both of them got very loyal followings who wanna who wanna get out there. And I feel like the no, I do feel like the Jay Z loyal following is somewhere between thirty three to fifty years old right now, and the Kendrick Lamar loyal following is like somewhere between twenty four to forty years old. Like it's they overlap, but they don't overlap a lot. You know, it's an older crowd who's like the the Jay Z heads and. That's how I see it. But I mean, yeah, man, look, I'm looking at the time and I see that we already hit the hour mark. So, you know what I mean? We try not to go too far over with the uh, with the BFW pod. But um, like, once again, we appreciate all of the support and um, checking us out on SoundCloud, on YouTube, on the website. How's the website, man? Y'all need to check that out and, uh, and let us know what it's hitting on, man. We're going to try to drop some good visuals with this one and hopefully y'all... Stick it with us and check us out next week. Next week, I'm on, we might be on location. We might record that thing in um, in Denver next week. We'll see. See how that play. I'll be I out there. I ain't from Denver, but I D-Town Boogie. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs>